Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. First off, I just wanted to express my gratitude to everybody that watches the channel, keeps up the videos, likes them, and subscribes. You know, my intent with this channel was to share really my automotive passion projects, whether it be technology related with automotive or just the vehicles themselves. And I just want to inspire others to show that they can do some of these mods themselves, or maybe they don't want to do the mods because they're not really you know, up their alley or it's not quite their taste and that's fine. I can tell you from experience, I've done my share of mods, that after I do it, I'm not that satisfied. I'd be doing all these mods anyway, pretty much for the most part. You have given me some suggestions, so thank you for those because I've implemented some of them. But this video is going to look at every mod that I produced a video for. Yes, that's right, you can go back, watch a video, and get more details on the specifics, because most of them are installation-based, and some of it includes some lengthy reviews and how things are holding up. But today we're gonna to focus on the pros of every mod there's a video for, cons if any, and I'm gonna lace it with a ton of sarcasm. Let's go. First off, the bullet antenna by Ronin. It's cool, but I'm told, and I haven't experienced this, that the range outside of the city where the FM would be broadcast could be weakened or diminished and not as good but who listens to FM radio all the time? Taillight tint, you can see I don't have it on right now. When it's on, it looks cool. The cons, negative attention from you know who. Hyper dipped emblems, pros, cheap, effective, no downside, look at that. The cons, the people in the comments that get really mad that you have to over spray when you're applying it. But guys, it peels off, it is not spray paint. It is a rubber dip that peels off everything if you don't like it, and it's cheap. I would do it a hundred times over, and I would do it on a million dollar vehicle. Folding tonneau cover, pros, secure, seals everything up nicely, better gas mileage, cons, keeping it clean. We have hard water, and it is tough to keep it clean up here. You would have to dry it every time. It's a mess right now and it stays a mess. It's pretty much the dirtiest spot on the vehicle every time I wash it. But an update, I would love to find a hard tonneau cover, sport bar combination. If you know of one, and I've researched a ton, there's a, maybe one or two options out there. There's more with soft covers, but if you can find me a hard cover option with a sport bar that looks good, I might go that route. Window tint, this is ceramic window tint. The pros, the tone isn't too brown or too green, so it matches the rear windows. The cons, tint tickets, and the negative attention that it draws when it comes to the police and trying to enforce important things like tint. Now, just for this next reason alone, which I'm not gonna give it all away, it is worth subscribing to this channel because I have something up my sleeve that is going to revolutionize the world of tint and that's all I'm gonna say. So subscribe if you wanna know more, but it will blow your minds. Headlight tint. So I have some tint that I've added to the side of the headlights. The pros, it hides this nasty chrome and this reflector on the side. The cons, none yet, challenge me. The grill overlay. Pros, super easy install. You don't even have to use the adhesive. You can use cable ties. You can't even see where they are. Con you get a little bit of a line under the front camera if you have it. So you get used to it pretty quick, but it does block that little bit at the bottom. So you might hit somebody that's right there, but you won't hit them if they're right there. Spacers, I have one and a half inch hub centric spacers. They've been great. They've held up even for heavy towing. I like the look. I'm considering it for the Escalade. The stance on our Escalade drives me crazy. I feel wheels need to be flush with the with the gap here. Cons, none on my part other than those haters. GMC OEM illuminated logo. Pros, pretty cool, till it's not. That's the con, one year warranty, mine burnt out two or three weeks after warranty. 
if you order the emblem with your, the build of your vehicle and it's part of that build, whether it's installed by the dealer or yourself, I heard it's a 36 month warranty. Either way, there's like no stock on these. I have one on back order. Could be 10 years till I get it, but it was a big letdown. But I love it and I'd install it again, but I'd probably try and find a way to protect it better because I think that moisture wrecked it. This is vinyl. Vinyl wrapped mirror caps, pros, stupid cheap, not that hard to do, whether you wanna pop them off or put it on without taking the caps off. I have two videos, two different ways of doing it. The tricky part, so the con, it's not really a con so much other than getting the exact white match color, probably not possible, but I think it's close enough because they're not touching each other. Auto start eliminator, you can mod this button here to be default on or off instead of default on. And the fact that you can toggle it is a big pro. The con, it's a little pricey up front for what it's doing, but in the long term, I think it's worth it. Roof wrap and hood wrap. Pros, you know it's me coming down the street, very unique. Cons, I think that some of the adhesive in these areas that get really, really hot is starting to give way a little bit. So that just means it's gonna be extra cleanup for me whenever I remove this. Airbags, as you may know or may not know, I have airbags installed in the back here by Airlift. It is because I tow a heavier trailer getting closer to the max tow radian of the vehicle. It's there for safety and just for peace of mind because I'm in a wide open area of the country where the crosswinds can get pretty nasty and it helps keep me planted and just makes the experience better overall. The cons, it does add a little more bounce or stiffness to the back end when you're not towing something heavy. It's just part of the trade-off, but I do have an update. We now have a permanent lot for our trailer, so I don't need to tow it nearly as often. So I'm considering taking the bags out and doing a proper off-road shock upgrade in the back. Let me know your thoughts. So to complement the airbags, I installed an onboard compressor down here. The benefit is keeping the bags full, filling them up, deflating them, filling up again on the fly without the need of an external compressor. So I can do that all on board. I also have the ability to connect an airline, but to do any real work with this airline, like filling tires and things like that, you would want an auxiliary tank. But because I might be taking the airbags out, I may just leave the compressor here, add that auxiliary tank and have an onboard auxiliary system that can do a lot of work. What do you guys think? For the S-type exhaust, pros, obvious, cons, the Karens and the Kevins. Now I actually have two Uncle Kevins and an anti Karen, so I'm allowed to make comments like that. But in all seriousness, very good exhaust, very happy with it. Does have a lot of bark and grumble, especially on those cold starts. Tones down a little bit, no tone while driving. Fantastic engineering when it comes to that. I can tow the trailer, tow the boat, and it's not droning me out. I can still listen to music and really enjoy the ride. But I'll warn you, if you don't want it to be too loud, don't add an intake or just go with a Touring, which is the more subdued model, kind of like the GM Performance that you could buy. Um, it's made by Borla anyway, from what I'm told, but uh, that would be kind of another option. Otherwise, you can go attack and then everyone will hate you, not just Kevin's and Karen's. I have a fog light mod by Boost Auto. Mine's wired up that when my high beams are on, I still have the ability to turn these on and off with the button. You can also wire it up a different way. You can't do both, but you can wire up a different way where when your park lights are on, the fog lights are auto on all the time. So I can actually take that mod and adjust it to do the other or the former. It's really up to you what you want to do. That's right, no cons. So wrapping this rear valence and tinting this third brake light. So wrapping the valence, you get a better result if you take it off, but it's a very involved install. It's not too hard, it's just finicky and it's a little bit annoying but you will get a better result wrapping in this area here. But if you want to wrap the third brake light, you can do it pretty well and not have to remove it. Because I removed this, I did them both together and then put it together again, and I'm really happy with the result. Hey, if you've been counting how many times I've been on top of saying pro and con without forgetting, I know I probably messed up already. Forgive me, but when I say something that's a positive tone statement, it means pro. If it seems kind of negative or annoying, it's probably the con. Keep up. So I have a mod called the All Cargo Light Mod by Boost Auto again. When the rear lights come on, the cargo light comes on, this cargo lamp comes on. Because I have a light bar, which we'll talk about next, that comes on and it creates a lot of rear facing light. The cons, 
it's confused a lot of people because every video I've made since then, if it has anything to do with lighting, they see me hit unlock on my truck and all these lights come on and they're like, how did you make it so your cargo light came on? Mine doesn't do that. How did you make it so the tailgate light comes on? Mine doesn't do that. It's because I put that mod in. So sorry, but not sorry. This LED light bar underneath the tailgate, this is the Putco one. I'd say it's probably one of the best out there. It is probably also one of the most expensive, but they sell a very specific harness that will work with any light bar. I've got the harness in there and the light bar. I've had no problems. It's super bright. It's got those uh, chip on board LEDs. So they're super close together, a nice array of lights. So there's no patches along the way or, or dots. It's just one consistent beam. Looks amazing. The con really is just the price. Cold air intakes. This one's gonna require a little bit of a story tell. This is the s and cold air intake for the 6.2. This is the one I originally purchased for the truck. The pros, it's mean. It does make an intake noise. There's one guy that said there's no such thing as intake noise. I disagree. There's such thing as intake noise. There's also another intake that I installed by Cold Air Inductions. It's because when I put this one in, I gained three more subscribers and six more people that watched and two more likes. And that was enough to get Cold Air Inductions to approach me and say, hey, would you consider doing an install and a review of our intake? We'll ship you one. So I made that video. And I took this one out, put my original in, because not everyone has this one as a starting point. So I was able to show the install from start to finish. I ran it for, you know, a month or so. I really liked it. But going back to that intake noise piece, it was quieter than the s &B. So both worked well. I think both are probably fairly similar when it comes to any type of benefits, whether it be mileage, whether it be, you know, that little bit of uh, extra grunt if you have an aftermarket exhaust. Um, but I think this one being a more aggressive look, as well as the ability to take out some ports to add extra airflow, not just from the forced air through the, uh, the front of the engine here, because it uses a different air box altogether, where the cold air inductions uses half the original air box system and then just puts a new top on it. So we took the cold air inductions intake. I knew we were getting a 2022 Escalade with a 6.2, so I saved it for that vehicle. So we're running both. I like both. I'd recommend both. But for the personality of this truck, it would be this intake. Now, some of you might already know this story, but the reason I'm explaining it in depth that I am is because there are some people out there that clearly didn't watch all the videos and you know who you are. So smarten up. Start watching all the videos. I'm just teasing you. Just watch my BMW videos. That would help. Interior trim wrap. So I did a vinyl wrap. I used white. It applied well, it fit well, the install went well, but it lasted a day. Not because of the quality, but because it looked horrible. So I felt like I needed white sunglasses, which for some reason my wife won't let me wear, but I'll work on her. Anyway, I do have some plans to redo this. I have some other films or vinyls that I'm testing out. So there might be an update there of something that works better. I'm aware of a uh, wrap that'll match like the stitching and the inserts on the seats. But I want to play around with some other ideas, so stay tuned. The wireless charger in the console, whether it's called Qi or Qi, however you pronounce it, I'm going to start pronouncing it Qi, just to trigger everybody. Pros, fast charger, secondary charger for all of those adults that could fit in the vehicle, all five of them that probably have phones that may want to top up their battery, they have one that's built in, ready to go, that's super slow, and they have one that's faster that you can add on. Cons, all the people that think that there'll only be one phone in the vehicle at a time and that my truck will have three or four birthdays before the phone's fully charged and we can set it here and hate our lives. That is the con. And of course, another con is GM should have just put something like this in here, even if it wasn't as fast of a charger. Infotainment upgrade. So you can see I've got this AI box right here. This is the full version. There's also a light version. Pros, I basically have an Android tablet running on my infotainment system. I can watch Netflix, YouTube, and more importantly, I can have controls for all of my lighting, whether it be my rock lights and, and things that we're gonna get into. The cons, because this is customizable, 
the more you try to do to it and configure to it, it's an Android-based kind of tablet thing, you're gonna probably run into some glitches. So if you don't want the headache of configuration or you just maybe don't have the know-how, then I wouldn't go with this. I would probably just go with the light version, which isn't really customizable, has a couple apps of use to play media and check the weather and stuff like that. Otherwise it plays Netflix and YouTube. And yes, I know you shouldn't be driving and watching movies. Thanks for the tips. And of course I don't condone it. Be safe, passengers can watch movies and stuff. That's up to them, but as a driver, just be safe, don't do it. Of course, as a public safety announcement, when driving, as the driver, you are not to watch videos while driving. Passengers, do what you must, but you need to police the driver, make sure they don't glance over. We have our tailgate wrap. Pros, looks like a Ford. Cons, looks like a Ford. Changes are coming eventually. We got our Bilstein 5100 ride height adjustable shocks. Replace those old ranchos, which were terrible. It does add a 1.1 inch lift. I'd say closer to one inch. It's kind of hard to tell because 0.1 inches is tough to measure when you're wearing down your tires, tire inflation, things like that. Love them, ride great, better than original. No cons yet, good upgrade. And no extra stress to those ball joints. The mirror spotlight mods, when the high beams come on, these come on as well. The pro is you get that extra forward facing light. Now I live in Canada, so you can drive an hour sometimes on these back roads, maybe longer, and not see another vehicle. You want that extra light, doesn't hurt, kind of points into the ditch as well. Now the only cons has been the commentary around some of the lighting upgrades in general. I remember one guy distinctly saying that, you know, oh great, another truck on the road that's gonna blind us. Let me be clear, on behalf of all the Nickelback fans, because I'm Canadian, and Justin Bieber who will back me up, us Canadians, use our lighting responsibly, especially when it comes to our high beams. This light bar install is one of my prides and joys. The pros, it looks amazing. Pretty involved install. You have to replace this valence that has a cutout. So this is the diesel valence. The non-diesel version has a full panel right here. So you gotta order the diesel one. This is the second light bar I put in here because the first one I went with a rough country because it was more affordable. I wanted to make sure it would fit. It fit, so then I upgraded to this uh, premium one by Strand. This has a dual color uh, DRL, as well as a good performing light bar. The con is those two bolts. And those who have done this install or tried, you know what I'm talking about. We have our Oxbeam eight gang switch panel right here. The pros, I'm able to control eight devices, up to 60 amps total, all at once that is. And all of the wiring congregates under the hood, which is where most of these peripherals are. The downside is, it's aftermarket, so it doesn't necessarily look stock. You can see it's, you know, it's stuck there and there's a wire coming out. It doesn't really bother me, to be honest. The thing is, I considered installing the GM panel with the upfitter switches, and I think I might still do that because I can just remove the aux beam panel at some point. But the problem with the GM upfitter switches is all of the wiring congregates in the cab. So all of the outside peripherals would need to be fished through the firewall to connect to the upfitter switches. So I might install it. Let me know what you think. I have a lead and, and that might be an install you're interested in seeing. And I can always remove the aux beam or I can just use them to complement each other. Replace the fender badge. So I went with the 6.2 liter V8 with the white backdrop. Well made, definitely unique. The con, it's tough to get the old ones off without damaging, and I feel like I might need white sunglasses. We have our rock lights. I think that they're well-made, super affordable. I think they're gonna hold up. The cons were having to extend some of the wires, not a big deal, but when I suggested to the company, Oxbeam in this case, that they should make some extensions available, even for purchase, they seem to have not ever have thought of that before. So maybe they'll start making them and that would be cool. The cons though is because it's RGB, it doesn't make true white. So if you want white rock lights, you probably should just buy white rock lights. This will make every color of the rainbow, but when it comes to white, it's kind of dull and a little bit off-white. Tailgate step lights, mine are a little dirty. The pros, way brighter than the ones from GM and much more affordable. The only cons is fitment. Oh, see, I just actually re-clicked that in. Fitment can sometimes be a reported issue, but I don't have any on here, but a little bit of caulking, that's not going anywhere and that would solve the problem. 
So this bad boy right here is my remote wireless control switch to switch on anything that I want. So I've wired it up to turn on my aux beam panel so I can control all the lighting that I have attached to it with this remote without having to turn the truck's ignition on. Otherwise, if I didn't have this, I'd have to turn the ignition on, engine would be running, or I would just be on accessory mode and then I could control all those things. But what if I want to control it without having to turn on the ignition? That's where this comes in. The con is it is a pretty involved install because you need to install a diode in the wiring to make sure that when this triggers the panel on, what it's connected to where I'm getting the power from when the accessory is turned on. We don't want to wake up those systems. So you got to put a diode in line to make sure the current can travel back through the system. The full video is on my YouTube channel. Definitely check it out if you want some more insight. Another con though is if I leave this on and forget, then just the illumination of the panel is going to drain the battery over time if I leave it for a long period. So I have these upgraded knobs, which finding replacement knobs for your GMC Sierra to kind of cover that chrome they're out there and there's different companies that offer them, but I feel really bad about this one. So the pro is I like the look and I think that uh, it kind of tones down the chrome up here and then gives it a bit of a utility look based on the overall look of my vehicle. So my personal taste, I like it. Where I feel bad though in the con is the amount of heat that the person who made this has taken because of the cost he needs to charge. He designed these in CAD, spent time on them, brought them to market, had to find somebody to produce them. This isn't just your normal $300 3D printer. And it takes time to scale and bring the cost of everything down. So he's working on that. But I feel bad for the guy because he took a lot of heat for the amount that he has to charge to make this endeavor worthwhile. It reminds me a lot of my wife and I's painting business that we have on the side. We have tens of thousands of dollars of equipment. We give a quote but people expect the price to be just a little bit more than the cost of materials. We have to train people, we have insurance, we have liability, we have to buy all of our supplies, we have to pay the fuel, like, you get it. There's costs associated with owning a business. And uh, I just feel, I feel bad for the guy, but uh, you guys gotta give him a break. It takes a bit to start a business. So here we have my oil catch can. Pros, it's definitely picking up stuff from the return vapors that are going into the intake manifold. Time will tell how effective it is. I'm glad that I have it. The cons, really, I think you just need to watch out for the cheap ones that aren't really doing that much. So I did finish the rest of the wrapping of the cab. The pro is I think it looks better and kind of completes the look. And you can tell it's me coming down the road. The con though, is I didn't go all the way down to this line originally. So I added this piece here, which is just a patch. So there's a small seam right there, but shh, don't tell. We have our LED under hood light pros. It's actually quite effective. Cons, GM should have included this to begin with. And then these switches that it comes with are really junky. I could see, like look, I got a little bit of problem there. I'll probably need to replace this switch sooner than later. License plate LEDs, the pros, they're super bright. They're not that amber incandescent bulb look. Looks really cheap. These are much brighter. The cons, and I've never noticed this, I've only heard it from other people. They say that in some cases, certain bulbs, when you put LEDs in here, makes the uh, backup camera have a bit of a, a hue or a halo around it or impedes it a little bit. I haven't experienced that. I haven't really tried to look for it. So maybe that tells me that it's not prominent in my installation. Also the con is with LEDs, sometimes they just don't last, but these were super cheap. You get like a, a 10 or a 12 pack for really not that much money and very easy to replace. So I did install ambient lighting in the front and the back. The pros, cheap, relatively inexpensive. Cons, cheap relatively inexpensive, which probably translates into not long lasting, but we don't really know, time will tell. So we added these three inch pod lights or ditch lights. The pros, they work well, they work as intended. The cons, sourcing the brackets, not that easy. These are by Putco and they work well. After the install, I noticed that my wiper, so I got a little scratch on here, was catching the back of the light bracket. So I shave this down, it's fine now, it clears it, but just keep that in mind that your bracketry could end up getting in the way of the driver's wiper. 
Well, there we go. That is pretty much every mod that I also have a video for. If you've watched this video entirely, you picked up on some of the upgrades that I'm considering for the future, and it shows that you're a true supporter. On that note, if you saw some value in this video, hitting subscribe, hitting like really helps me grow the channel and supports my ability to continue to give you content like this. So again, I just really appreciate your support. Growth equals results when it comes to things like YouTube and projects like this. I do have an update on wheels. I do have some that I'm looking to get. The problem is they're in the US and it doesn't make fiscal sense for the shipping right now. It's well over $1,000 Canadian just to ship them. I've got to find a way to work with a business that's close to the border, just under Saskatchewan, so I could just drive down, they'd hold them for me, I'd pick them up, I'd bring them back across the border, pay duty, that would make more fiscal sense. I just don't know of a company that's reputable that does that. If you know one, send me an email, my email's in the description below. I'd love to figure this out and put some new wheels on here because these tires, not a huge fan. I feel they work good, but they're just, they're too noisy. And those that have them know exactly what I mean. So again, if you don't want to miss anything, please consider subscribing, turn those notifications on. And if you didn't realize, a lot of my other videos, especially the vlogs, they have AT4 content in them, but more importantly, they feature Mrs. Dawn's life and she's way more entertaining than me. Those who watch those videos know exactly what I'm talking about. And you might be missing out if you don't think you're interested in those. Check them out. I think it's worth it. But anyway, we'll talk to you next time.